the woman who is sitting on $15 billion and a company that is known all around the world. Charlene de Carvalho Heineken is the heiress of a different type of throne. It's not the iron or golden throne, but the beer throne. If you haven't figured it out, we are talking about the owner of a 25% controlling interest in the world's second largest brewer, Heineken. So why would someone so rich be involved in tax evasion? Doesn't she have enough money? Well, before we tell you all of that, let us tell you about Charlene de Carvalho Heineken. She was born on June 30th, 1954, in Amsterdam, Netherlands. The daughter of Freddie Heineken, the man who stood at the top of the company for 50 years. Freddie himself was the grandson of Gerard Adrian Heineken, also known as the man who founded the Heineken Brewery in 1864. As you see by this family tree, it's safe to say that Charlene grew up in a privileged environment. However, her parents did a great job raising her, as they were also known to be relatively private and modest, despite their wealth. Charlene continues that trend, showing everyone that the richest woman in the Netherlands is above all else, a well-mannered lady. She studied law at Leiden University in the Netherlands. Interestingly, didn't initially take an active role in the family business straight away. She was focusing on improving herself, and her choice of university was proof of that. Leiden University is one of the oldest and most prestigious universities in the country, known for its rigorous academic programs and distinguished alumni. During her time at Leiden, Charlene's education provided her with a solid foundation in legal principles, critical thinking, and analytical skills. Although she chose not to practice law or immediately join the family business after her studies, the knowledge and discipline gained from her legal education likely played a role in her later success in managing the Heineken empire. On a fateful day in 1981, Charlene met her husband, Michel de Carvalho, in an interesting and rather high-profile context. Michel, a British financier with a colorful background, including a career as a professional luger and an actor, was also an Olympic athlete who competed for Great Britain in the Winter Olympics. The couple met while they were separately vacationing in Switzerland, a place known for attracting the wealthy and elite for its skiing resorts and luxurious lifestyle. Two years later, she got married and started a family with the former Olympian. The de Carvalho Heineken family continued placing a strong emphasis on having a private and grounded lifestyle despite their immense wealth. They have homes in several countries, including the UK, Switzerland, and the Netherlands, which allows them to lead a relatively private life away from constant media scrutiny. Their children have largely followed in their parents' footsteps, valuing privacy and contributing to the family business in various capacities. But as we all know, nothing lasts forever. In early January 2002, Charlene's father, Alfred Henry Freddy Heineken, died at the age of 78 from pneumonia in his home in Nordvik, surrounded by his family, including Charlene. The same year, shortly after that, a question was raised by the board of Heineken. Charlene made her decision, and without any experience in running the company, without truly feeling pressure in her life, she decided to accept the challenge. Before we continue unraveling more mysteries about Charlene, we would like to ask you to show us your support by subscribing to your channel. Make sure to like this video as well. So how did Charlene manage to grow Heineken without any previous experience? It was a team effort. Charlene and Michelle started working together in managing the Heineken empire. Michelle's financial background came in handy, and Charlene's law knowledge and sharp decision-making made it all complete. At the time of her father's death in 2002, she inherited around $5 billion, instantly making her the richest individual in the Netherlands. But with her choice, she showed everyone that it's not all about the money and the joys of spending it. It's about legacy and heritage. It's about having a Heineken as the majority owner of Heineken Holding NV. But don't get it twisted, she did enjoy the money as well. Some of the most notable purchases made by her include real estate in London, Switzerland, and a couple of estates in the Netherlands. The London home is located in the Kensington area, one of the city's most exclusive neighborhoods. While exact details of their London property are not public, homes in this area typically range from 12.5 million 
to $62.5 million. The property they own in the prestigious Swiss resort town of St. Moritz is a lot easier to appraise. High-end chalets in this area can easily exceed prices of $22 million. Aside from this, Charlene and her family possess a noteworthy art collection, featuring pieces from renowned artists. While specific details of individual purchases are private, art collections of this caliber can easily be valued in the tens of millions. For instance, owning a few pieces from famous artists like Rembrandt or Van Gogh can amount to over $50 million. The family also travels in their private jet, and the price of just owning one is mind-boggling. While specific amounts are not always disclosed, Charlene and her husband Michelle are known for their significant contributions to various causes. For example, they have supported the Royal Academy of Arts in London and the National Gallery, with donations likely in the millions. Everything surrounding this family is shrouded in mystery, it seems. So when potential allegations of tax fraud came their way, everyone was surprised. Why would someone with such wealth decide to avoid paying taxes? The easy answer is, they have a lot more to pay than your average Joe. But what is the real answer in Charlene's case? Well, time will tell. As for now, we know the following. It was revealed that De Carvalho Heineken, the richest person in the Netherlands, has hardly paid any tax for years. Every year, she receives hundreds of millions of euros in profit distributions from her shares in Heineken and funnels that money via Luxembourg to the tax haven of Jersey. The Heineken heiress should have paid a 25.8% tax on her profits that went from the Netherlands to Luxembourg. Carvalho Heineken avoided that by her Dutch company not paying profits to her Luxembourg company but repaying share capital. As a result, around 130 million euros reached Jersey tax-free at the end of December 2023. During a parliamentary debate in May 2024, Van Rij, the State Secretary of Finance, stressed that the Netherlands implemented an anti-abuse measure, which has also applied to dividends since January 1, 2024. She also stressed that if it turns out that this measure is being circumvented by using a legal option, that coming up with an anti-abuse legislation would be a must. This is because before the implementation of the measures on the 1st of January, Charlene was using one loophole, and after it, she seemed to find another one. Her advisors devised a new strategy. Julier BV, a Dutch company holding her Heineken shares, reportedly began repaying a portion of its share capital to its Luxembourg counterpart, Silva Plana SA. Unlike dividends, share capital repayments are not subject to Dutch withholding tax. This maneuver allows De Cavallo Heineken to essentially extract her wealth from the Netherlands tax-free yet again. This pointed out the elaborate tax avoidance scheme, which was used by the De Cavallo Heineken family for years. Using this complex web of letterbox companies and foundations in Luxembourg and Jersey, notorious tax havens, she continues to significantly reduce her tax burden. Is this maybe the reason behind the astronomic increase in her wealth over the years? Even after two economic downfalls, she managed to increase her wealth from five to $16 billion over the past 22 years. This helped her maintain the status of not only the richest woman, but also the richest individual in the Netherlands. We can only speculate for now as the Heineken heiress declined all interview requests from NRC media regarding her tax arrangements. Her spokesperson stated that the information pertains to her family's private life and that they will not issue a comment. Heineken Holding, the brewing giant, also declined to comment on the matter. To keep it simple and realistic, all billionaires have their ways of avoiding or significantly reducing their taxes, and this was just one more elaborate way which Charlene used. This is a testament that regardless of the money some of these individuals have, they will still always strive to have more. Still, one can't deny the responsibilities she took upon herself and the success she continues to achieve with the company. What do you think about this tax evasion predicament in which Charlene de Carvalho Heineken found herself? Let us know in the comments below.